Chapter 69. Kate slipped her shades off. I slipped mine on. I left Laud's lair. The ter 13th floor was no problem. The stairs down to the third floor were no problem. The sky bridge wasn't what I expected. It was open, long, and narrow. It was totally exposed. No more than a hundred feet from the gathering. I wanted to sprint across, but I knew that would attract attention. So I walked purposefully, like I knew where I was going and what I was doing. About halfway through my purposeful walk, I glanced down at the plaza to see if anyone was watching me. They weren't. They were all standing at the glass elevator shaft in the center tower. The car was descending. It disappeared beneath the bottom floor. It stopped. No one spoke. No one took their eyes off the shaft. The car came back up into view. The door slid open. Three men slept, stepped out and two dogs, Rottweilers. I thought Christmas breakfast would be over by now, the man in the middle said loudly. I recognized his voice, the Lord of the Deep. He had a gray beard and, a, and long gray hair tied in a braided ponytail. He was big. The two men flanking him were bigger. They were not wearing shades. Their dogs were not chained. The men were not clean. They were shoulder holsters with pistols, mush room guards, Morlocks. They looked hungry. So did their dogs. Where are the others? Kate asked. Looking for that kid. That kid was standing on a sky bridge out in the open with his mouth hanging open in complete shock. Laud had taken a shortcut of his own and picked up a couple of friends who looked like they had eaten their children for Christmas breakfast and then throw the bones to their dogs. Like I told you, Kate said, matching Lod's bluster, that kid is gone, headed south or headed home. Not according, according to the sneakers. He never made it to the top. He's still beneath. They've been wrong before, Kate said, but we should certainly make sure. She stood and put her shades back on. That's why I brought reinforcements, Laud said. Good. When we catch him, we'll take both brothers down to the mushrooms. Even better, Kate said. Laud pointed at the people sitting at the tables. What's all this about? Just an informal gathering to talk about security and pod business. Aren't you getting a little ahead of yourself? You're not an original. Yet, Kate said, smiling. Laud smiled back. We'll talk about that after we make sure the other kid isn't down there. Fine. What about the radios? They're still out. I sent a couple people back down to check on the antennas. It's going to be difficult to coordinate a search with communications down. We'll manage. Then I guess we better get started. The kid on the bridge got started too, or restarted. I shouldn't have stopped to eavesdrop. But if I hadn't, Coop and I might have died.